Shout out to you if you have a full-time job, but you're also running a small business on the side. Maybe you even have a family, not on the side, hopefully. But I know what it's like. It's very difficult to juggle. It's trying to figure out where to spend your time and when to actually do the work that you have to do. Sometimes you're feeling like you don't have enough hours in the day. You never have enough time. You always have something to do. This video is for you. Today, I'm going to talk about five ways that you're probably wasting a lot of time and how to stop now. And don't get mad at me for number three. I said what I said. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Trini Business Life with me, Nizel. And today, I really want to talk to my business owners who are trying to juggle multiple things. You're trying to juggle your side hustle or your small business with a full-time job. You also may have a family and other responsibilities that you have to get done during the course of your day and you have no idea how to juggle all of it because you just feel like you do not have the time. We all have 24 hours in a day so it really boils down to how you spend yours but there's always something to do whether it's remembering to post on social media, keeping up with the latest trends in your particular area, keeping your records up to date, responding to customers, following up on customers who ordered like 20 trillion years ago, but they never actually finished the ordering process. But there's also all the other aspects of your life, like your family, your spiritual life, your social life. We're not even gonna talk about social life. Oh my goodness. But there's always something to do. So to start, I want you to take a look at your life in terms of how you spend your time. Think about the way you spend your time in the same way you spend your money. So how do you budget your time? What takes up the most of your time? Are they actually important or are they things that you just happen to do a lot during the day? What are the things that you need to spend more time on regardless of the cost because it's just that important? What are the things you're spending too much time on? What's out of your budget because you just do not have the time for it? What is something that needs to be in your budget even if it costs you a lot of time? Well, based on my experience and a lot of research, I've narrowed down five ways most business persons are actually wasting a lot of time and I want to discuss how you can stop wasting that time. For a business owner, one of the key ways to really manage your time effectively is to set and stick to business hours. Many of us struggle to stick to our business hours or to even set business hours because we've fallen into the trap of grinding culture where you work and work and work and work to achieve your goals. But the thing is, a lot of people who've been working, 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 working are slowly realizing now that they have put a lot of things on the back burner that have suffered in their life, such as their family or their health. So I believe in setting business hours and sticking to them. There are many ways that you can actually do it so that you don't miss out on that money. Because I think that a lot of people don't stick to business hours because they are afraid of missing out on money. So someone may message you wanting to make a large purchase or make any purchase and you may feel like, oh my gosh, I need to answer this message because this is money that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lose out on if I don't respond. But you have to look at what is this going to cost you in the long run? Are you spending time with your family and you're answering messages? Are you supposed to be getting rest, which you actually need to be able to be more productive the next day, but you're up in the middle of the night trying to respond to messages? You may think that customers will be turned away because you're taking too long to respond, but what exactly is too long? I did some research and studies actually show that customers typically expect to be responded to within 24 hours. So... Think of how you deal with your messages. If every time you get a message, you stop what you're doing in some other area of your life to respond to that message, you are not actually going to end up being productive. A better thing to do is set a particular time where you answer messages. Maybe you answer messages at six in the morning, 10 in the morning, two in the afternoon, and four in the afternoon, four times for the day. That's actually really good because you have a smaller window instead of waiting 24 hours maybe and it shows customers that you have other things going on and you're not just waiting for them to send a message and it's not like you're playing a game with your customers where you're just not answering messages you're waiting you're like you know when people are dating and they're like no there's this two-day rule is that a thing I don't I haven't I have not dated in like 10 years I don't know anything about these things but you know, no, we don't reply until, you know, three days have passed or whatever. It's not like that, but you have other things that you can do. So do it. 
that's why you feel like you're not being productive because you're cutting into the time where you could be more focused on a particular task instead of breaking up that time to answer a message every single time one comes in another great tip is to actually make use of the automated responses on social media so you may have whatsapp for business or instagram facebook all of them have some sort of automated response that you can set to say something in particular to your customers so on my business whatsapp once customers message me outside of 7 a.m and 7 p.m they get a message saying thank you for messaging my business hours are 7 a.m 7 p.m if you would like to place an order please use the link below and send your name and delivery option and so it sends them to my catalog on whatsapp for business and most times that's what they wanted anyway they just wanted to place an order you may choose to direct them to some frequently asked questions section of your instagram page and things like that but you have to think of well what do they usually message me for outside of you know my working hours if you don't already have business hours this is a good time for you to think of what are hours that make sense for your lifestyle do you have a family that you really should be paying attention to after certain hours do you have a full-time job that you really need to focus on and you can't afford to get fired because you're doing other things during the workday? You really need to map out what are your working hours and stick to them. I don't care if somebody messages me at 7.01. Most times, I do not answer it. It may be, a, let's say, a customer whose order I'm packing in that moment and they message just to ask me to include something or exclude something i if i glance at my message without actually opening it if i glance at the messages i can see what it is and i can decide yeah no i don't need to reply to that other than that i do not respond to those messages outside of business hours because my life is actually important to me my family is important to me my mental health is important to me my free time my social life those things are important to me and it's not fair to the people in my life for me to be answering messages and doing business outside of work hours. So I think that it's really crucial for you to recognize what is important and what time of your day is important so that you could set business hours that are realistic for your life and really try to stick with it. You're not going to miss out on money if you put things in place so that customers know what to do if they need to place an order or to ask a question. My second point is to actually maximize your time in your full-time job. Now, for some of us, juggling a small business alongside a full-time job is really difficult sometimes. It can really be stressful, it can really be a lot, especially if you have a job where there's a certain season where it's crunch time and you have to really focus on a high volume of work in a short space of time. Or if your small business has a particular season that it really is booming with sales with you know orders and things like that for most businesses that's around christmas time but you may have another type of business where mother's day might be the time august vacation might be the time that sort of thing so i know what it's like to juggle the two but i'm telling you if you maximize your time on the job the full-time job that you have and you set business hours these two tips alone can actually help you to really redeem some of the time now as i said before you can't afford to lose your full-time job because you were found doing other business during work hours or slacking on the job now this is not exactly slacking on the job but i realized when i did a little inventory of my time that i spent a lot of my lunch hours really just hanging out with my friends at work and having a good time and nothing is wrong with that but when you have more than one job, basically, because that's what it's like having a small business, you're working for someone, the someone is yourself. So you have two jobs. You don't have time to really waste hanging out when you should be productive. There's a time to be productive and there's a time to hang out. And a lot of times we take a lot of time to hang out and a lot of time to do other things and not enough time to be productive you really do need to look at your the time spent during your work hours for your full-time job and see if there are any places where there are gaps where you are really wasting a lot of time maybe there are things that you are doing during your working hours that are not helping you to get all your work done for the day so maybe it's causing you to take work home 
I personally don't believe in taking work home from a full-time job. I feel like if they are paying me to work for these hours, those are the hours that they're getting because they are paying you for your time. Now, your job may be different from mine where, you know, work may bleed into hours outside of official working hours. So I can't relate to that. But I do feel like there are a lot of people who can put their foot down and say, no, I'm not working these hours because work ends at four or five or whatever. I'm not going to get involved in what you do at your job. But what I can say is look at your life and see where you can readjust. It might be possible for you to say no to the extra, you know, the extra load outside of working hours. And it may be possible for you to look at within those working hours, how you can maximize your time so that you get all your work done in those hours. So that once you leave work, it's your time. Here's the third point. I already made my disclaimer up front. Don't get mad at me, but you don't understand why you don't have enough time to get your work done because you're scrolling too much. Let's be real. We all know how it goes. You go on social media because you want to say happy birthday to Aunt Mabel or whatever. Minutes turn into hours and the next thing you know, you're down some rabbit hole looking at people popping pimples and you don't even remember what you went on social media for. I've been there. I realized, like I had this epiphany some years ago that I was just spending way too much time on social media and not just that, but I have goals that I want to fulfill, but yet I'm there scrolling, watching other people fulfill their goals and get their lives together while my goals are still goals and are not going anywhere else. So I started to realize that all this content that I was consuming was just making me fat. Not literally, but I'm receiving a lot of information, but I'm not actually doing anything with the information. You know what I mean? So I stopped consuming so much and I started creating, not just creating content like this, but also just going after the goals that I had. And so social media is a great tool because you get a lot of information. I'm literally on social media right now giving you information, but I'm telling you there has to be a balance and there has to be a point where you stop consuming and you start actually producing and you start actually going after what you need to do and fulfilling your call because you can't just sit and look at other people's lives and your life is just doing nothing stagnant waiting on you to take hold of your call and like fulfill your purpose that's my sermon pass around the collection plate i know it's important to have downtime and to actually relax and just you know do nothing but sometimes the do nothing time is this much and the do something time is this much in our lives and we need to kind of reorganize reorder our priorities by the way if this video is actually adding value to your entrepreneurship journey please like and subscribe and don't forget to share this video with somebody else who may be on an entrepreneurship journey now the fourth way that i think a lot of people are wasting a lot of time is something i have been guilty of for years and it is getting too much sleep. Now, we all know the studies that say we need eight hours sleep, but mm, I think I used to overdo it a lot. I would get nine, 10 hours sleep. I used to make going to sleep a whole thing. Like it was like a whole ritual, you know, you go get home, you take a shower. It may be four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon. I don't care. You know, I carry my phone, I watch a little video or two or ten, snuggle up in my bed under the sheets. It was like a whole thing. But that was a lot of time wasted. And now I realize that in my early 20s, I wasted so much time relaxing in my bed that I could have had a head start on a lot of the things that I wanted to really get done in this life that I'm now trying to do in my mid 20s. So are you sleep obsessed too? because your dreams aren't getting fulfilled when you do things like that unless you're the sandman or you sell mattresses all that sleep isn't taking your business forward okay so stop now my next point is actually something that i feel like i need to tell everybody in the world this has to do with maximizing your commute the time that you spend 
going to and from your job or your school. I used to be a big gaze out the window, taking the scenery and relax type of person when I was being driven to work. And then when I started driving to work, I enjoyed listening to my music. You know, I put on my gospel music and I'd sing to the Lord and I'd be so happy. Oh my gosh. But then I started listening to podcasts and YouTube videos while going to work in the morning and my life transformed. My life transformed. <laughs> I'm not even joking, actually. I'm actually very serious about this. I started looking at YouTube videos that would help me in particular areas. So sometimes it would be, you know, sermons and things like that. But other times it would be business videos, learning about how to maximize profits and how to, I don't know, grow on Instagram and things like that. And this is years now. And I learned so much over a short space of time that I obviously started putting things into practice and I saw improvements in my life in different areas, but especially business for our purposes here. And I realized how productive that time in the morning was and in the afternoon coming back home. I moved further away from my job during COVID. So now I actually take two hours in all back and forth to go to work and come back home. And you would think that it's terrible, it's hard, but it's not. I don't even hate traffic. I've never hated traffic, but I actually enjoy my time going to and from work because it's so productive. I'm telling you, you may want to reconsider how you actually spend your time commuting to and from work or school. You may be sitting on a gold mine of time that you can actually use to be more productive. Another thing I do during that time is to plan out my day plan out my week um i also do a lot of writing now you may say wait huh? not writing when you're driving i'm not advocating doing anything else but driving while driving <laughs> but i'm just saying i personally write while i'm driving now it's traffic bumper to bumper traffic so it's really not that wild but I don't even need to look down at the book. I have a notebook in my car. I keep a pen in it all the time because while I'm driving, especially when I'm listening to those videos, but other times when I'm not, if I'm just, you know, looking out the window, sometimes a thought will come to me to do it business, an idea, something that I want to do, somebody that I need to remember to call or whatever it might be. And I write all those things down as they come to me while I'm driving because that's when I have some of the juiciest thoughts, you know what I mean? And best ideas. So I do a lot of note taking while I'm driving, while I'm listening to those podcasts, I take a lot of notes. And then when I get to work, because I get to work early, um, you know, I go through my notes while I was driving and I put all the thoughts together properly. And I don't even have to use my phone because obviously that's illegal. You see, it's illegal to drive and text, but it's not illegal to drive and write in a notebook. So I'm beating the system basically. So I really hope that you are able to, as I said, take a little inventory of your life, do a little budget of your time and see where you're spending your time and where you've been wasting a lot of excess time so that you could really put things in place to maximize on the time that you have. You can do so much in 24 hours if you actually budget your time wisely. Thanks so much for watching. This is Nizel with Trini Business Life. Bye.